Hey Bonjour, bienvenue dans ce nouvel épisode. Aujourd'hui, comme vous pouvez le voir, je suis en train de m'apprêter à aller faire du surf. Mais si ici, en Afrique du Sud, sur la plage de Muisenberg, je peux faire du surf sereinement, c'est grâce aux shark spotters, ceux qui protègent les personnes des requins, mais qui aussi protègent les requins en éduquant les gens sur les croyances qu'on a à propos des requins et qui sont malheureusement pas toujours vrais. Alors c'est parti, aujourd'hui, on part à leur rencontre. Mais d'abord, je vais aller surfer. A tout de suite I'm a shark spotter. My mission is to protect people and sharks. Is that that's oh there's that that uh, that whale thing? Yeah, with that wave is now breaking. There's like a, a, a what's that whale? Isn't that small whale? Um, not mink, not mink whale. Um, it's gonna come now up. Because Vervin said that thing was up and down all the time here. Yeah. But it looks small, but now it looks like a, a shark here. But it comes up, obviously, but it comes up. Not a shark. So uh, how do you do um, to see the sharks? Yeah, basically what we do is what we have, our equipment is polarized glasses and we have a couple of binoculars and obviously our radio. So the binoculars, I mean the um, polarized glasses helps a lot with the glare on the water. Basically the color of the glasses makes it very easy for us to see that shadow in the water. So basically that's what we see, we don't see the sharks on top of the water. We sit them under the water, so we use the, the like say the glasses and the binoculars. We work uh, five hours on a shift. You're either going to be up here on the mountain or you're going to be on the beach. So it's either eight till one shift or one till six shift. So we work every day right through the year, 365 days a year. If you're on the beach, you'll basically mostly be um, interacting with a lot of people that come into the office. If there's a shark in the water, you will put up the flags. Just be visible on the beach and obviously speak to people. And if you're up here, it's more of a concentration thing. So up here, it's not much that you are uh, going to do. You're just going to obviously have to focus on the water a lot. For example, if now you see a shark, what is the protocol? What happens? Obviously, first use your binoculars to see what kind of shark it is and maybe the, maybe the uh, size, species of the shark, that kind of thing. And then you will let your... Um, Beach spotter know, you know, check your time, what kind of what time was the sighting, what time was the shark sighting. Let your beach spotter know. They will it depends if they will set the sign off or not because we don't always pull the people out of the water. It depends on how close the shark is around in the area and also how close the people is in the water. 
sometimes we have sharks we don't clear the beach we just put up a red flag um, indication that shark has been spotted but it's not close to the beach area so the people is not in immediate threat shark is maybe moving towards the beach area put up a white flag the sun will go off with that flag we will follow that shark wherever it goes and if it's not if it move away from in, move away out of the area and then you scan your water up and down again for a couple of minutes before you reopen your beach again we have four flags that we use black flag green flag red flag and the white flag the black flag is it means poor spotting condition poor spotting conditions means but sometimes doesn't mean that we can't see anything in the water people always um, assume that is the case when that flag is up so i mean 90 percent of our sharks that we see we see when the black flag is up so green flags poor um, good spotting conditions mean obviously the water is nice and clear people can use the water the white flag means obviously when there's a shark um, spotted in the water you have to clear the beach you have to stay out of the beach stay out of the water until the spotters will let you know if the, if the, if the shark has moved away and the red flag goes up after the shark has moved away so it means basically high shark alert we also use it if you maybe have a lot of fish in the bay a lot of maybe you had a lot of sightings for that day you know more than maybe three or four sightings a day then we'll put up that flag also for for most of the day the red flag cette surveillance en continu n'est pas la seule mission des shark spotters la sécurité passe aussi par la prévention et l'éducation y a-t-il encore beaucoup d'accidents Comment les shark spotters travaillent pour préserver à la fois les requins et protéger les humains Pour le savoir, j'ai rencontré la directrice. So my name is Sarah Buddies. I am the CEO of Shark Spotters, so I oversee all of the activities here. So Shark Spotters is a um, primarily a shark safety program, and the idea is to have an early warning system to prevent sharks from encountering people. It started here in uh, Cape Town in 2004, and up until this year, it's only been based here in Cape Town. Um, now, following two fatal shark incidents in Plettenberg Bay, which is on the other side of the Western Cape, we've now expanded there. So from the 1st of December, we will have shark spotters in Plettenberg Bay as well. We have about 25 shark spotters in Cape Town and 15 in Plettenberg Bay. And so it works very effectively. We've had over 2,500 shark sightings since the program began. Um, and so we've managed to prevent sharks and people from coming into close contact on all of those times. So Cape Town hasn't had a shark bite incident since 2014. Um, and so that's uh, eight years that, that we haven't had a shark bite incident. In Plettenberg Bay this year, there were two fatal incidents, which is relatively unusual. Um, they have seen an increase in shark activity in Plettenberg Bay over the last year. So when you've got people and sharks sharing the same space, it's not entirely unusual for there to be incidents and accidents where people and sharks come into close contact. But in general, you're looking at just a couple of shark bites a year in the whole of South Africa, and less than one person a year normally dies from shark bites. And why do sharks come this close to the human? So the, the sharks in South Africa, well certainly in Cape Town, they have very clear habitat preferences. So during the winter months, the autumn and winter months, they're at the seal colony, which is in the middle of False Bay. It's only about eight kilometers from shore. But there they feed on the seal pups as they start to learn to swim. So they're what we call predator naive. So they're very easy to catch because they don't really know how to look out for predators. As those seal pups grow up and spring starts to arrive, they get harder to catch. And so the sharks move and they come towards the inshore, close to the beaches, where they then start feeding on the large schools of yellowtail and other big game fish that we have come close inshore. So they're not moving into areas because of people. They're moving because that's where their prey is moving. But of course, if they're spending spring and summer months at the beach, that's also the time that we're spending the time at the beach. So that's when we have the highest spatial overlap and the highest risk with regards to shark incidents. You also have missions to educate people about the sharks. How does it work, it's this part? Yes, yeah, so safety is just one of the pillars of our organization. We also have an applied research program where we study the sharks um, to help better conservation strategies for them. We have an active coastal conservation program where we do coastal rehabilitation uh, to protect coastal habitats. And then we also have an education program where we go out um, to a wide range of people, whether it's to schools, to universities. We do beach pop-up events where we just set up on the beach and we teach people about shark safety tips, beach safety, so drowning prevention, as well as uh, shark conservation, ocean conservation, the dangers of plastic pollution and stuff. And that's really valuable to try and change people's 
mindsets and make them more responsible ocean users. Yeah. The biggest thing with shark safety is that you can take your uh, you can take steps by yourself to prevent your risk of encountering a shark. So you can't always rely on uh, measures like shark spotters. We're not at every beach. There's not shark safety programs at every beach. But you can do simple things like don't uh, swim if you see birds feeding, if you see dolphins, you know, if there's a lot of marine activity, that means that there's prey in the area and there's likely to be sharks. Um, stay in shallower water. Most of the sharks we see are behind the back of the surf line. So if you're in shallower water, you're less likely to encounter a shark. Um, swim in groups, because if you're in a group, not only are you more intimidating to a shark, but also if something happens, there's somewhere, someone around to assist you. Um, and then things like don't swim if you're bleeding, Try not to wear shiny jewellery because that reflection can look a bit like fish scales and so that might attract a shark. Um, so, and don't swim at dawn and dusk. Um, in some areas it's because that's when sharks are more actively feeding, but also you can't see well around you and if you can't see then a shark can't see well. So it's really important to try and only swim in the ocean in good water conditions. Always listen to um, uh, shark spotters or lifesavers. Listen to warnings when they happen, get out of the water. And yes, before you get to the beach or when you get to the beach, try and find out about shark activity. In the same way that we check what the weather forecast is, we must also be checking about shark activity. And if there's been a lot of shark activity at the beach that you want to go to, consider using another beach where there hasn't been so much. Chaque jour, les shark spotters sauvent des vies en veillant sur les surfeurs et les baigneurs. Mais grâce à leur engagement dans la recherche scientifique, leurs actions de sauvegarde et de réhabilitation des espèces marines et de leur habitat, grâce à la sensibilisation et à l'éducation, ils permettent de mieux faire connaître l'océan, ses espèces et le monde dans lequel on vit. Un monde précieux, souvent fragilisé par l'humain et que nous ne connaissons encore que très peu.